Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Wellbe Show and podcast. I am very excited to have a timely guest with me today, Jessica Ortner. She is a New York Times bestselling author and the co-creator of the Tapping Solution app, which at the moment has almost 2 million tapping meditations played. Jessica, welcome. Thank you for having me. You're so welcome. I'm excited to talk about this today because I actually have just started working with an EFT tapping practitioner myself for the first time. Um, I'd never done tapping before two weeks ago or three weeks ago. So I thought it was a great opportunity to introduce tapping to my audience. And who better than someone who's been doing it with, I think your family, right? You yeah. work with your two brothers, which is amazing. I am an only girl with two brothers. So I saw that and thought, Wow, we're like kindred spirits. Yes. And are you the middle child? I am the youngest. Youngest. And I joke that the fact that we get along and we work together means that tapping works because nothing pushes (laughs) your buttons like working with your own family. (laughs) I think that's true. Or just trying to do anything collaborative with my two brothers is always a feat. But anyway, so the app is is very successful and popular. And at the moment, I know you're giving healthcare providers free access to your premium version of the app. Um, so anyone listening in the healthcare community, go ahead and check out the Tapping Solution app. Uh, you may be able to use it for free or, or unlock the whole library for free. So first and foremost, for I'm sure there's people listening who are thinking, what the heck is tapping? <laughs> as I did originally, and then you Google it and you realize how much is out there and how many, you know, mainstream outlets have really covered it because it is research supported. And we'll get into that in a second, but just very briefly, what is tapping? What is EFT is actually an acronym for emotional freedom technique. So what is emotional freedom technique and how did the two connect? Yeah, absolutely. So tapping is a stress relief technique where you stimulate acupressure points on your body while you think of a stressful thought. So when we are feeling anxious, we're having a thought that's now creating this physical anxiety in our body. We can have tightness in our chest or a pain in our stomach. What you do with tapping is you actually get clear on the thought that's creating the physical anxiety as you stimulate these points. And what happens is you begin to send this calming signal to your brain, letting your brain know that it's safe for you to relax. So you end up getting to the point where you can think that negative thought, but now you feel more relaxed in your body. And when we have a negative thought and we feel relaxed in our body, we're not being hijacked by that anxiety. That's the moment that we can really take a step back and be resourceful or creative as we're dealing with whatever challenge we're facing. So tapping has really evolved throughout the years and it continues to evolve. EFT is called it's emotional freedom technique before EFT became popular depending on what your challenge was you would tap on different acupressure points and a man called Gary Craig really took these nine points that are easily accessible and incredibly powerful so that anyone can do this technique so no matter what you're dealing with you can learn these nine points to help you find relief There is clinical EFT, which a lot of therapists have begun to incorporate into their practice. There's been a lot of research around clinical EFT and PTSD to the point that it's been approved by the VA to be used to help veterans. And then there's tapping for stress relief. And that is my passion, is how can we get the simple technique in the same way we do meditation How can we teach everyone how to do this technique themselves to help create some relief and and release anxiety? So I want you to back up because there is so much interesting stuff here. First of all, okay, so emotional freedom technique is tapping or is there- So tapping is the general term. Okay. And EFT is a specific way of doing it. Okay, interesting. So what is that? They can be one in the same right? You can be doing EFT and call it tapping. They seem to be interchangeable. There's a lot of flexibility with the term. Okay. Got it. Because I had heard about an EFT practitioner and, you know, when I was thinking about doing tapping, spoke with them, but they didn't do tapping as part of their protocol. And I thought that was interesting. Like, how could you do EFT without tapping? But I guess it's possible. Wait, Um, they didn't tap on acupressure points? 
No, it was uh, just more about closed eye breath work and processing and things like that. I actually have never, the people who I know of what I've heard of EFT is, is the tapping. So that might be another modality that they're calling EFT. I, have, I haven't heard of that. Most common EFT is tapping on acupressure points. Got it. And so for anybody that, you know, is not that familiar with what acupressure points are, um, it comes from traditional Chinese medicine, right? The points that the Chinese have used for thousands of years with acupuncture, which we know has a lot of research supporting that that works. Uh, and so acupressure is the same points, but just using the pressure of your fingertips rather than using needles. And so, okay, so we've established that because I think it's quite yeah. new to a lot of people. So emotional freedom technique is using, you know, tapping, um, which I know sounds so silly to keep saying without explaining what that is, but you use your fingers and Jessica is going to show us in this interview, uh, <laughs> you use your fingers to actually like tap on those acupressure points. So that's yes. what tapping is. That's what emotional freedom technique is. And then let's get into, you know, like you just said, how it's being used, the effectiveness, the research, all of that. So how does it work, you know, and, and is there any research or studies to show that it does work? Yeah, absolutely. So in the last 10 years, there's been an incredible amount of research. And I do believe we were, we are just in the forefront. There's so many things in the works, but a few studies that I have found to be the most fascinating out of all the research, I want to mention two of them. One of them is measuring cortisol. So cortisol is often known as the stress hormone, and you can measure cortisol through saliva. So in this particular study, they had participants that 30 minutes before they did anything, they took a saliva sample to test their cortisol levels. One group did tapping. Another group did reading about stress relief. So this is like going on a blog and reading on how to look at stress in a different way. And then the third group just read magazines. And so they did this for an hour. After the hour, they measured the cortisol again. For the group who did nothing except read magazines, their cortisol actually went up by 2%. They were even more stressed. The group that did just reading about stress relief, the cortisol did go down by 19%. And the group that did tapping, it went down by 43%. So a 43% decrease in cortisol within an hour. What's been so exciting about the Tapping Solution app that we've created is that within tapping, you always measure on a scale of zero to 10 how you're feeling. It is completely subjective. So you're anxious and on a scale of zero to 10, how anxious do you feel? You do the tapping and then afterwards you measure again. And this helps you feel more encouraged to continue the process. You keep track of your progress. But what's been so fascinating is since we do this, we're seeing the data. And for example, our tapping meditation in the app that's for releasing anxiety, there's been over 260,000 plays and the average decrease is 41%. And this is a nine minute audio. So 41% in nine minutes is pretty incredible. And so we're now seeing that research where we're saying, okay, this, we're seeing the body react, the cortisol is going down. I'd love to share one more study that has to do with brain scans because this is fascinating. There was another study using tapping for cravings. My book is called The Tapping Solution for Weight Loss and Body Confidence. And one of the focuses, one of the things I focus on is how to use tapping to calm your stress response so you don't feel like you don't have control around food. It's something I struggled with for so long. I wrote this book before this study came out. But this study has come out where what they did is uh, in Bond University in Australia, they took 15 obese adults and they had 10 of them use tapping and then the other five of them didn't do anything. Before the study started, before they did anything, they did brain scans in an MRI machine and they showed them photos of foods that, that people have cravings for. So it was like a cupcake and chips and like all those things. And you see these brain scans and their brains are lighting up like Christmas trees. The center of their brain that's associated with pleasure and reward is lighting up. 
So you're seeing that even though it's not the food, they're not even smelling it, just the photo of these things creates that craving. They did that with all 15 participants. And then they did two weeks where they tapped twice. So two hours for two weeks. And they did it again, where they brought them back into the MRI and they did brain scans showing them photos of this food. And for the group that did the tapping, you see this significant difference where some of them, you don't see any part of their brain being lit up by these photos. And subjectively, the participants were saying, I don't really feel that emotionally attached or that anxious around this craving anymore. But what's amazing is now you see the brain scan and you see what's going on that it really is impacting the brain. So I'll actually send you those if you want to put them in the show notes, but you can see the before and after. So we're seeing whether it's cortisol levels or these brain scans, that tapping really is having an impact on the body. That is so interesting. And I'm a total research science junkie. So that's great for me to really visualize how it's impacting the body in a physical way, because we know it's having a emotional impact on the brain and on the body. And I know that just from my own experience doing it, you really do, like you said, you know, tracking that, how you feel one to 10 afterward, you just feel calmer. And usually the tapping sessions are the ones I've done are, you know, 10, 12, 15 minutes max. And it's amazing how much calmer and kind of, I guess that's the only word I can think of or zend out you feel after the fact. And it makes sense that it's kind of resetting the central nervous system response, because I think what's happening with anxiety and stress in general in our society is that like we've you know, I'm sure people have heard this before, but because nothing is chasing us, you know, there's no tiger, there's no real threat for most of our lives um, in a dangerous way. You know, obviously something today that would be dangerous is like somebody mugs you, you know, you would feel that adrenaline or you're running away from a car that's about to hit you. Like that's, that's, a, that's an actual modern day, you know, use of adrenaline that's appropriate. But most of our adrenaline and anxiety is coming from these things that our misfires, you know, are causing our nervous systems to accelerate and our cortisol to spike over something like somebody said something kind of nasty on your Instagram comment or your boss, you know, says something in a weird way in a Slack chat or, um, and it, you know, all these things where you just feel there's an issue here or you start thinking about how you know, you didn't make as much money this month as you did the previous month. And you let that spiral start where you think, well, I'm just never going to make money again. Or like, I'm never, I'm going to have to move out of my apartment. I'm da, 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 And you keep going on that train of thought until the body thinks there is like a very serious, dangerous thing that you are now um, in need of, you know, kind of somehow dealing with or getting away from. Whereas you can, you know, like you uh, explained, use this technique to use the same words about this thing that you might find to be scary, intimidating, worrisome. Let's use the, the boss comment, for example, and reset the nervous system with this technique to show you and your body that no, it's not actually a terrifying threat. It's a little comment um, that could mean something. It could be nothing. And even if it means something, they're probably going to forget the next day or it doesn't necessarily yeah. mean you're going to get fired. And even if you did get fired, there are other jobs and you know, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to starve to death. So I love that it's not necessarily changing the reality. It's just changing your body's perception of the reality or of the thing that's going on. So that's yeah. kind of been interesting for me to see and which is why I wanted to start doing it because I could tell that there were certain parts of my life where the reality wasn't bad but the perception in my body of said thing was for some reason not firing correctly you know it was I'm, yeah a block i'm so happy that you that you bring that up because one of the challenges i think we face especially those of us who are more self aware right and we read the books and we listen to the podcasts and all of a sudden something happens and we're having the stress response and what can tend to happen is we start to fight it and we think, well, I shouldn't feel this way, or I, I know I'm safe and we try to use logic. But when the body feels unsafe and you have anxiety, logic is often not enough. You can't just talk your way out of it. By having a conversation and allowing yourself to really 
own your feelings, to experience them, but now you're tapping. So you're feeling calm. You're not kind of getting yourself more worked up, but you're navigating through these feelings. You get to the point where, again, you're not fighting how you feel. You're not telling yourself that you should feel differently. You're not forcing yourself to be positive. You're honoring where you are. You're calming your nervous system. And once you can address, kind of really face that thought, but feel more relaxed, now logic works. Now it's easy to go, you know what, I'm not going to get fired. And if I do, I'm going to be okay. But it's impossible to jump to that reasoning and actually feel better if we aren't addressing how we're physically feeling. Does that make sense? It definitely does. I can see this with so many people that I know. The same patterns emerge, and for myself as well, in different aspects of their lives that prevents them from either being happy or making progress or feeling thankful or whatever it might be. And that's a great opportunity, I think, for using a technique like EFT or tapping, because you can see that it's this emotional blockage that's preventing you from actually experiencing the reality in many places, not just a one-off comment from the boss, but you know your ability to appreciate your family and your job and you know your relationship with yourself, your self-worth, your body, all that stuff. And especially, you know, I know you wrote a whole book on this, but especially with weight loss, because a lot of it is emotional and it's often not driven by logic. (laughs) People's both desire to lose weight or inability to lose weight or relationship with their weight. There's all these interesting emotional things where I think if you can reset your nervous system's response to it's three pounds, I'm going to lose them. I don't need to stress out about it. Or yes, I have 25 pounds to lose, but I have to do it a day at a time. So I'll just get started, you know, not letting the overwhelm of it overtake you such that you can't do anything, um, which I think a lot of people deal with. I want to go back to one thing that we talked about regarding the science and research of this, because I think it's important to note, similar to acupuncture, and you can correct me if I'm wrong about this, but there's been a lot of research done now, probably more in acupuncture than in, than in tapping, on you know, just showing that it it is working because we know that the VA is using both tapping and acupuncture. We know that um, the actual military is, and they they go off, you know, research showing that it's effective and then they implement it. That being said, similar to acupuncture, I don't believe that there is research showing scientifically how tapping actually works, right? We don't know why using these points whether you're using a needle and acupuncture or you're using tapping with your fingers on the pressure points changes both the central nervous system response and clears these systems and organs from mis, you know from misfiring or having dysfunction the way that let's say acupuncture tends to work for fertility or something like that you know how is that possible and so what I, I interviewed a licensed acupuncturist probably about a year ago and there's a lot of different theories about how that works, you know, about how uh, similar to like water with lightning, you know, the body is primarily water. Um, and so when you put, you know, this metal needle into this particular point and there's, you know, the whole idea of energy meridians, it's basically transferring the energy from that object throughout the water, which is your body, to bring energy and attention to the areas that need it on this kind of like super highway, right? The, the meridians. And so I would wager that it works similarly with tapping where you're using these pressure points to send signals from different parts of your nervous system around your body to basically calm down this response or to target certain organs with certain emotions. So can you speak a little bit more about which points you you tap on? And I know there's some connection to certain organs or certain emotions from there. Yeah. So you're exactly right. It's the the research that's coming out is about its effectiveness. But when it comes to the conversation of, well, why is it so effective? That is where we have theories and we're not quite sure. When it comes to these acupressure points at the tappingsolution.com, we do have a blog post about which points impact what organs based off of Chinese acupressure points, but we also don't have the research to even know that that's true. That's just what has been taught for thousands of years. And so personally, uh, when it comes to the points, I 
am not aware of what point impacts exactly what organ in the body. What I do know is that these nine points are so easily accessible and that people are getting incredible emotional shifts. So that is where most of my focus is on is of like, let's just learn these nine points and have an experience with them. And again, like you said, it's still a lot of uh, theories around why it works, but we're not quite sure yet. But it is exciting that at least the research is proving, okay, listen, this isn't just in your head or this isn't like there is a reason that these things have lasted for so long and there's a reason why they're spreading so fast i'll be honest with you before there was so much research i used to be like well i don't care about research because it works and thousands of people are sharing that it works but now i'm beginning to understand that in order for it to get into the va as it has and other places this research really is important and, uh, you know, I hope it, it continues. And I see a lot of kind of big universities are starting to focus more on how it works for particular things. Because for example, tapping has a, an amazing track record around pain relief. So there's new studies coming out or being worked on right now um, around pain relief, especially now when the opioid crisis is such a big deal. There's much more funding now in order to investigate these things. The reason that all this research is you know, only 10 years old is because before there wasn't the funding to kind of figure out why this is working. But I see that there's a shift where universities are now able to start getting these grants. And it's, it's just an exciting time and we're really in the forefront of it all. Yeah, I think it is a really exciting time. And I hate that it took the opioid crisis and all the deaths that came with it for, you know, a lot of our major organizations and institutions like the VA and the military and these big universities to think differently about what can be used for, for pain relief, for trauma, for anxiety, all these things. Um, and I think, I mean, this is just my guess, but as we get further along into mental health being a major issue, especially in the U.S. and especially with young people, and so much medication for all these mental health conditions, I think we're gonna see a backlash because of all the side effects and because of all the negative impact of all those medications that people are gonna say, whoa, are there other ways that we can you know, treat mental illness or even just, you know, I, I shouldn't say that anxiety and depression aren't a mental illness, but things that they're symptoms that sometimes people can feel without actually having a clinical diagnosis of depression or anxiety. I, I think just the conversation that our mental health has a huge impact on our physical health is surprisingly relatively new in the mainstream. I mean, people have known this for thousands of years, but now the conversation is, well, how how is our anxiety impacting our body? And a lot of people look at tapping and you know they'll go through our app and they'll see that we have tapping for financial stress and for pain relief. And they're like, I don't get it. Like, well, how can one technique work for so many things? It's not working on those things, it's working on stress. And we have stress around our finances that impacts our ability to get organized and feel empowered. We have stress around a diagnosis. I volunteered for many years with an organization that did free therapy for um, free, like holistic treatments for women with breast cancer. The biggest thing that we would tap on are conversations that they had with their doctor that they found traumatizing. And then the interesting thing was a lot of them dealt with insomnia and you read online and you say, okay, insomnia is a, is a side effect of cancer. But in all the women I worked with, they didn't have insomnia before the diagnosis, even though they had cancer before the diagnosis. So you're seeing that it's really the diagnosis and not the cancer itself that's impacting your ability to sleep. And so if that's the case, when we're trying to support someone on their journey, we have to look at the implications of what does a diagnosis to you do to you emotionally and mentally, and what does it do to your nervous system to hear that type of news and also give them support through that way as well. That's such an interesting example because I'm a patient advocate, a board certified patient advocate. So I think a lot about supporting people, you know, that's really what my whole platform and mission is, is related to health empowerment through tools that you can use to both prevent you know, disease and obviously also reverse it. But the trauma and the isolation and the lack of being heard, I think 
seems to be a huge piece of preventing somebody from healing. Yeah. Um, and so when you can use tools like EFT tapping to reduce that trauma or not reduce it, but just kind of tell your body it's okay, you know, it's okay, we're going to get through this or that conversation isn't the threat, isn't the tiger. It was just a conversation. The body can return to what it's trying to do, which is use all of its resources to heal whatever the issue is, whether it's cancer or mental illness or things like that. Shifting a little bit, how did yeah. you get into this? Did you have any personal experiences with tapping that made you think, okay, this is something that I really want to you know, build a whole app and company related to? Yeah, it, it didn't happen all at once. Uh, it started when I was really sick with a cold. You know, when you get sick and it's like week two and I, like, I just couldn't beat it. It was just a regular stuffy nose, sore throat. And my brother came over, my older brother, Nick, and he said, listen, I, I've heard this stress relief technique. It's supposed to really help the body. Do you want to give it a try? I was like, okay, whatever. When you're really sick for so long, the benefit is that you're just so sick of being sick that you're willing to try anything. So I just went with it and I'm tapping on these points. And again, he is my older brother who's known to play pranks. So there was definitely a moment where I'm like tapping on the top of the head and I'm looking at him like, are you just trying to see how far I'll go and how ridiculous I'll look? And he's like, no, 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 just, just try this. And I, I'm tapping on the points while I'm talking about my physical symptoms. And as I do that, I notice that I, my body really begins to relax. And it's like this weight is lifted off of my chest and I gain this new awareness and I look at him and I start crying and I tell him, I don't want to get better. He's like, what do you mean? You don't want to get better. It wasn't that I had decided to get sick. I was sick, but in that moment in my life, I was in a place where I was working so hard and I didn't feel like anything was going my way. And I just had this overall frustration and this sadness and I kept pushing but again like I just didn't feel like I was I had the clarity in my life that I wanted really around around my career and I was very young at this point I think I was 21 years old and he said okay let's just tap but now talk about how you're feeling these emotions and so I give a voice to these emotions, which to be honest, Adrian, I didn't even know that I had them. That's the challenge sometimes is like emotions build up and we're so good at just pushing them aside and getting busy. But suddenly I was giving a voice to these feelings and this anger that I had as I'm tapping on these points. And I noticed again, I was able to relax and I took this deep breath in and my sinuses had cleared up and my whole body felt energized. And I thought, Wow. Like it, this was, I had read that emotions impact your body. And I think all of us know that logically, but we so often forget. We just get busy and we forget. And it was that moment where I could just really witness in my body, wow, the stress is impacting my immune system. It's impacting my ability to recover. And then after having that experience, I got busy again and I totally forgot about tapping. Uh, and it wasn't until a few months later when I was going through a really tough breakup and I was in bed and I was crying and I just wanted to find some relief. And I was like, well, I was trying to think to myself, what was that thing? What were the points? And I only remembered half of them. And I went through the process and again, I felt such relief. And then I was like, wow, I'm not even doing this perfectly and I'm getting such relief from this. There is something here. And then, you know, this was back in 2009 and my, I teamed up with my brother and we put a lot of money on credit cards and bought camera equipment and figured out how to make a documentary film that showed people's results. We saw that people were using it all over the world. Uh, we saw that online so many people were writing in their stories, but it had never been filmed. So we decided to do that. And that started our company where then we started doing online resources. We have this yearly Tapping World Summit, which we've done for 12 years now. And then, you know, recently, a year and a half ago, March 25th, 2018, I went into labor the same day my app launched, which is why I'll never forget when, when the app came out. But the app came out then, and that to me was all of our work has kind of led us to create an experience where people can just easily access Tapping. Because we had a lot of people say, I read your books, 
I love it. I did it once. I had an amazing result. And then I never used it again. And so we really want to make tapping the next meditation and do both. You know, they're both great practices. So yeah, with the Tapping Solution app, uh, we have tapping meditations that focus on different areas, whether it's general anxiety or stress around your finances or doing some tapping before you have to have a difficult conversation at work all really designed to just help you address the anxiety and feel calm and more centered in your body. Yeah, I, I see this actually being the next meditation. And I also meditate. So um, yeah. I should say that uh, I do think, you know, while there's still so much research being done, that if somebody was interested in, you know, trying, tapping, but was a meditator to, you know, continue doing both because they might be hitting your nervous system at different places. You know, the way that your body uses breath might be a different impact on your physical body than the way that it could use these acupuncture points and that sort of thing. So yeah, I'm definitely trying both, but I hope you'll indulge us in yeah. um, kind of a little beginner EFT tapping session. Now, some people will be watching the video version of this and some people will be listening to the recorded podcast version of this. So it's a little bit visual. I know when I was first learning, being able to see it helped. Um, so I would encourage anybody that's listening to the podcast, you know, go click the link in the show notes to, to see the actual video version, which would be on getwellby.com. But we'll just do a, a little example so that anybody who's kind of curious about it can use that to then maybe go explore your app and probably get access to, you know, tons of different tapping meditations. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll talk you through it. The first thing we'll do is I'll just teach you where the tapping points are before we start the process. Okay. So the first point is on the side of the hand. And for those who are listening, it's underneath your pinky. It's also called the karate chop point. And it doesn't matter what side of the body you tap on. So I'm right-handed. I use my dominant hand and I tend to tap on my left hand. Then the next point is the eyebrow point. And it's where the hair of your eyebrow begins near the bridge of your nose. You might notice when people are stressed, they go like this, they kind of grab the bridge of their nose. Then we have under the side of the eye. So follow your eyebrow until you find yourself on the side of your eye on the bone. And then you're gonna follow the bone until you find yourself underneath your eye. And so I'm using either two or three fingers and it's just a gentle tap tap. You don't wanna be so hard that you're pushing your head back. It's supposed to be comfortable. Then underneath your nose, between your upper lip and your nose. Then we have underneath the mouth, which is the crease between your lip and your chin. Then we have the collarbone point. If you feel the U-shaped bone underneath your throat and you go down an inch and over an inch on either side, you're going to feel it in between, your, um, in between the bones. If you are wondering if you're getting it right, you can also use your whole hand to simply tap on your chest and you're gonna hit that point. Then we have underneath the arm and it's a hand width from your armpit, underneath your arm. So for women, it tends to be where your bra strap lies. And then we have the top of the head. So those are the nine points. When it comes to tapping, people often share that it's this combination of ancient Chinese acupressure points, which I just talked you through, and also modern psychology. And the, the psychology aspect of it is when you start tapping, you start with an affirmation of acceptance. So you get clear on the problem and you say, even though I'm feeling anxious, I accept how I feel. Or some people like to say, I accept myself and how I feel, or I love and accept myself. The reason that this is such a powerful statement is two reasons. One is we often fight how we're feeling and allowing ourselves to simply say, I accept it. This is where I am means that when we continue doing the tapping and we're focusing on the problem, we can have a more honest experience with ourselves. We really, again, stop fighting ourselves for feeling it. And acceptance is very powerful. People often say what you resist persists. Uh, so often in my own life, every time I try to ignore how I'm feeling, it tends to flare up either in my body or in a different moment in my life when I get irritated with someone. Ignoring your feelings or trying to talk your way out of them is not effective. It's powerful just to have a moment to honor how you feel. So that's what we do with a setup statement, which we say three times as we tap on the side of the hand. 
Then we tap on the rest of the points as we give a voice to how we're feeling. So you can say the same thing over and over again, like I'm anxious, this anxiety, this anxiety. You can tell a story as if you're talking to a friend and telling them what's going on. It's not about the words. It's simply about getting clear on the thoughts that are creating the physical anxiety. You'll notice, I mentioned before, that you always, on the zero to 10 scale, rate how you feel before and after. When it comes to tapping, you always start with the negative, but if you find yourself to be below a five, you start doing some tapping and you're feeling more relaxed, you can bring in some more positive statements. Because again, the tapping is just sending this calming signal to the brain, it's relaxing your body. So if you have a stressful thought and now your body feels relaxed, it's easier for you to choose a different thought. You're now in control and not hijacked by your emotions. If you have a positive thought and you send that calming signal, it's easier to sink into it. The challenge that people have is when they try to jump to the positive. Some people are so tempted, you know, they know about positive affirmations, they're so tempted just to be positive and tap. But if there is a part in your mind that's saying, I don't believe it, then it means you're moving too quickly. You really want to always start with how you're feeling before you move towards other ways that you'd like to feel. Does that make sense so far, Adrian? It definitely does. All right, so let's have an experience. Uh, Adrian, if you can be my echo voice, so just you just simply repeat after me. For those who are listening, you can also say it out loud, which is powerful. It really keeps you in the moment. Or if you are around people and you wanna say it in your own mind, that works too. I think we can do overall anxiety. Do you wanna focus a bit about the overall around the pandemic, kind of everything that's going on there or just? Yeah, I think that there's a lot of different kinds of anxiety, financial, you know, health, fear of others, all that kind of thing. Um, so I think just a general tapping around that would probably be helpful for people, yeah. Okay, so we'll do general anxiety. It is always helpful to be a little bit specific on, on what it is, just again, so we're getting clear on that thought. So I'll focus on just the anxiety and the just feeling kind of overwhelmed and the uncertainty that we're feeling. Because yeah. I, I also believe that whether you're watching this and we're in the middle of social isolation or this is a year, the pandemic is going to have long-term impact. That uncertainty that we're feeling uh, is gonna have long-term impact. So I think that everyone can benefit from this. And also if uh, there's something in tapping called borrowing benefits, even if your anxiety is slightly different, repeat after me because your mind tends to make those connections and you can still experience more ease. So we're gonna focus really on just the anxiety and the overwhelm, okay? So let's uh, actually begin by taking a nice deep breath in. And if you're able to, make sure you're in a space where you can really have this experience. If this is something that you can't do now, just mark the time so you can come back to this when you're ready. And check in with your body and notice where you're feeling anxious. Notice where you're holding the anxiety. Maybe it's a tightness in your stomach or your chest, your throat or your jaw. Notice the tension in your body. As you think about the anxiety and the stress that you're facing in your life, all of the uncertainty, give that a number on the zero to 10 scale, 10 being very intense, zero, you're not really feeling anything neutral, notice where it is. And again, it's subjective. So just give yourself a number that feels right. And if you'd like to, you can write it down or simply take a mental note. Great. Now let's tap on the side of the hand and you can repeat after me. Even though I feel this stress in my body. Even though I feel this stress in my body. I accept how I feel. I accept how I feel. And I give my body permission to relax. And I give my body permission to relax. Even though life feels overwhelming. Even though life feels overwhelming. And I feel this anxiety in my body. And I feel this anxiety in my body. I accept all of these feelings. I accept all of these feelings. It's now safe to begin to relax. It's now safe to begin to relax. Even though I'm holding this tightness in my body. 
even though I'm holding this tightness in my body. Because life feels overwhelming. Because life feels overwhelming. I honor how hard this has been. I honor how hard this has been. And I give my body permission to relax. And I give my body permission to relax. Now we're gonna tap on the eyebrow point and we're gonna give a voice to these feelings. So repeat after me, all of this anxiety. All of this anxiety. Side of the eye, all of this stress. All of this stress. Under the eye, I'm holding it in my body. I'm holding it in my body. Under the nose, life feels overwhelming. Life feels overwhelming. Under the mouth, so many changes. So many changes. Collarbone, so much uncertainty. So much uncertainty. Under the arm, and I'm holding all these emotions in my body. And I'm holding all these emotions in my body. Top of the head, all of this stress. All of this stress. Eyebrow, part of me is ready to relax. Part of me is ready to relax. Side of the eye, and part of me is holding on to this stress. And part of me is holding on to this stress. Under the eye, there is room for all these parts of me. There is room for all these parts of me. Under the nose, there is room for all of these feelings. There is room for all of these feelings. Under the mouth, even though I don't have all the answers. Even though I don't have all the answers. Collarbone, even though I'm dealing with so much uncertainty. Even though I'm dealing with so much uncertainty. Under the arm, right now and right here. Right now and right here. Top of the head, it's safe to relax. It's safe to relax. Eyebrow, part of me feels like I need this stress. Part of me feels like I need this stress. Side of the eye, in order to make changes in my life. In order to make changes in my life. Under the eye, in order to take things seriously. In order to take things seriously. Under the nose, but maybe I can release this stress. But maybe I can release this stress. Under the mouth and still feel safe. And still feel safe. Collarbone, maybe I can release this stress. Maybe I can release this stress. Under the arm and feel more empowered. And feel more empowered. Top of the head, it's safe for my body to relax. It's safe for my body to relax. Eyebrow, it's safe for my mind to take a break. It's safe for my mind to take a break. Side of the eye, life might not be easy right now. Life might not be easy right now. Under the eye, but I'm open to experiencing more ease. But I'm open to experiencing more ease. Under the nose, releasing the stress from my body. Releasing the stress from my body. Under the mouth, feeling safe and centered. Feeling safe and centered. Collarbone, even though I don't have all of the answers. Even though I don't have all of the answers. Under the arm, right now and right here, I am safe. Right now and right here, I am safe. Top of the head, releasing this tension from my body. Releasing this tension from my body. Feeling safe to relax more and more. Feeling safe to relax more and more. Okay, now take a nice deep breath in. And exhale. And just take a moment to check in. We did a little tapping experience. Notice on that zero to 10 scale, as you check in with your body again, that tightness that you are holding, just made me yawn. <laughs> yeah, so exactly. You might yawn. You might even cry if you feel like you're having a release. Just notice how you feel. And that is just a little quick experience of what a tapping process is. You might have gone from an eight to a seven or an eight to a four, but notice any shift that you have. And also notice maybe there was something that really resonated with you. And that might be an invitation to tap a little more focused on that. What we did there is we had a moment where we just said, life is overwhelming. 
there's all this uncertainty. It feels difficult. We're not fighting our reality. We're honoring our feelings. And then we can move towards this idea of, well, maybe I can relax even before I have all the answers. Because what tends to happen when we're feeling anxious is we say to ourselves, well, once this pandemic is over, then I'll relax. Once I reach this deadline, then I'll relax. Once I make this amount of money, then I relax. So we create these rules around when we're able to feel good about ourselves and when we're able to relax. And that's really when we get into a pattern where we're just depleting ourselves and we're feeling exhausted and burnt out. To be able to say to yourself, I can relax even before this problem is fixed, even before I have the answers, it, it gives your body a permission to exhale. And the irony of it is the moment we stop having so much pressure to have all the answers, the easier it is to begin to navigate the situation and begin to find the answers that we're looking for. But it begins by just giving ourselves permission and reminding ourselves that even with it, within uncertainty, we can calm our nervous system and that we are safe. Yeah, I love that. I think a lot of us have done that at different points in our life. We think we can't you know, make time for ourselves or relax or feel good until we achieve blank, you know, whatever that might be in so many different places. You get into this, you get a new job, you make a certain amount of money, you, you know, find a boyfriend or like what, you know, lose the weight. Like, especially women, we make so many rules for ourselves. Oh yeah. So much self loathing and self judgment. And it's really kind of incredible. I've learned a lot from my husband just about like, God, you really, he calls it lashing. You really lash yourself. Like you gotta just, you know, for all these things that you come up with as far as what you need to be doing for X, Y, and Z, like who says, you know, like just throw that out or just get over it if it doesn't happen and try again. Um, yeah, I think that was the biggest personal lesson I've had with tapping. Before I really got into tapping, I was, I really loved personal growth. I loved books, I loved reading about psychology, but it was coming from a place of constantly wanting to fix myself, of thinking that if I could just do enough things and maybe one day I'll, I'll feel good enough and I won't feel disappointed in myself. And I really was trying to hate myself happy and criticize myself thin. It's like, that was my strategy. If I can be just really mean to myself, maybe I can push myself enough to do what I need to do to finally feel good enough. And it was a pattern I ran, you know, since I was a preteen. And so tapping to me was so life changing because it was the first time that I gave myself permission to feel these feelings and not try to fix myself, but have this sense of acceptance. And the moment you accept it, it's like it doesn't have control over you anymore. You know, you're not trying to fight or fix every feeling. You just know a feeling is a feeling that you can have for 90 seconds and then let go. And if you're feeling it over and over again, then you're holding on to the string of that balloon. So tapping really helped me begin to let go. I love that. Hate yourself happy, criticize yourself thin. I, that's such a, I think so many people can resonate with that feeling. And something else that you just said made me think about, you know, the impact it's already having the last few weeks of my life since I've been doing it. But it's not just you know, accepting the feelings that we're feeling. To me, it's also accepting the things that you've been doing. I've been, you know, having trouble getting out of bed for forever because I've had a low thyroid forever, you know, and I've always hated my, you know, I'm the same strategy. I, I can just hate myself out of it. You know, like if I just hate myself or criticize myself enough for that, I'm going to turn into a morning person. I'm going to jump out of bed every morning, ready to go. Um, and the last few weeks, I've just kind of been like, man, I'm in my mid thirties. Like This is not going anywhere. Like yeah. I'm going to keep working on my thyroid, but hating myself into overcoming, it's not going to help. I've begun to just kind of like when I have that morning, when it takes me a little longer than I want, as soon as I'm up, okay, that's behind me. Like, let's just continue with the day. Um, totally. And that took, I don't know if it was tapping, but it certainly has never been there, that acceptance until the last couple of weeks. So, you know, it's an interesting you know, correlation. I'm not going to say it's causation, but you know, it's, it's interesting that it's, it's connected there. Anyway, Jessica, thank you so much for this. I know we're running up on time and I think that, you know, my audience certainly at this point, if they've never heard of EFT or tapping, that was a nice little experience that, you know, 
everybody can do and they can dive in further at the Tapping Solution app. And of course, the Tapping Solution, is it the Tapping Solution app.com? Yeah, we have, that's the app website. And you can also go to the Tapping Solution.com where we have a lot of blog posts um, if you want to kind of investigate this more. The app is free. So download it. It works on Android or iPhone and just have an experience. Spend 10 minutes tapping on your anxiety. And especially if you have someone else in your life who's really struggling, pass it on. Again, it's a free resource. Uh, We do have a premium package where it's $12 a month to unlock the whole library. But even if you just use the free resources, they're incredible. So I really encourage everyone to start there. Yeah. And I think the more you get into it, even just these last two weeks for me, the more certain tappings or tapping meditations, they resonate with you so much. They're so particular to what you're going through or who you are and the voices in your head um, that you can really do many and, and begin to see, oh, wow, this is this one really like got to me versus yeah. some other ones, perhaps it's a little bit too general, as you were saying, or the wording is just not something that your body responds to. So it's not having as much of an impact, you know, as the ones where it's just like spot on to you. Um, So looking for that would be helpful if you're going to. Anyway, Jessica, thank you so much. Is there anywhere else that people can find you besides, you know, the app and your website? Yeah. um, On Facebook, Jessica Ortner, and the same as Instagram, I share tapping content. And also I have a really cute one-year-old. So if you're if you like well, cute toddlers, you'll get to see him too. Everybody loves cute toddlers and dogs. So you get tap <laughs> information and a cute toddler for the price of one. So that's yeah. <laughs> sure. Too. I already follow you, but I hope everyone else will too. And then thank you so much again. This has been thank wonderful. you.